everybody, it's Alara. Welcome back to my channel. It is all about cross stitch for the most part, with the, like an exception. Um, thank you so much to um, all my new subscribers. Uh, if you're new and just jumping in, thanks so much for stopping by and checking it out. Um, my subscriber count just kind of went a little nuts last week. Um, and I am still fangirling a little bit because, uh, Darren from Dizzy Stitcher shouted me out. Um, thank you so much, J Darren. That, that made my week last week because I was sicker than a dog last week. I'll get into that in my life update at the end of the video. Um, but I have, even though I've been sick, it's been a little over two weeks and I have a lot more than I thought to show. And my videos always end up kind of long. So let's, let's get into it. Um. But uh, but yeah, welcome if if you if you're just jumping in and and thank you so much for coming back if if you're if you're established with me. Uh, all right, so fair, and I'm gonna try and kind of do it in order. I have a little bit more stats written down um, for people who are are interested. Um, so I got and I I have most of my pictures printed out, but I'll need to insert one. This is um. A pattern that I got from uh, a lovely lady over on Instagram, Kaylee. Um, she is designing patterns now and um, kind of doing a test stitch for her. And this is uh, Snuggle Up Nomies. It's cold outside. And I got... I forgot to add. Mm -hmm. And I can't do math in my head. Oh, please. At 144... One day and 477 the other. I don't know what that is until I count it out on my fingers. 621. 621 stitches since the last time I showed you. And, you know, hang on, I'm going to stick it over here. I need a thing. There we go. So I've got his all of his the blue in his hat done and some of the polka dots filled in and I've still got I've still got to fill in inside here and I've actually messaged her and um, the pattern calls for like a tan nose I think I can't I haven't looked at the original pattern for a little bit but I was kind of thinking it would be cute if he had like a pink nose because it's cold so she said she was going to um chart it for me so that because I'm mm, I, that there's a lot of confetti in his nose and I'm not sure I'm real comfortable with doing a color conversion for that so hopefully uh when she has some time she will get me the the conversion for that and I'll have a little pink nose gnome uh let's see next I worked on Twisted Rainbow Sampler by Northern Expressions. Now this is just the, the cross stitch version. I do have the Twisted Band Sampler of theirs as well that has the specialty stitches, but I was not I was not ready for that when I when I bought this pattern. I did I worked on that for a couple of days and got 2300 stitches in from the last time. I was on fire. Fire I saw. And I really need some backing on my stuff today. I don't know why. So, rawr. Yeah, I couldn't quite figure out why I was getting bored. And Sorry, there's fluff on it. Why I was getting bored after only two days. And then I realized how many stitches I put in. So, and I'm working this. This is a black. Oh, and um, Nomi's I'm working on. I'm just a natural linen one over one full cross with um, DMC. This is a black Jobelin that I got from 123Stitch and um, working this two, no, one over two full cross. And this is like a silk, I think it's a rayon thread that I got, got from a store on AliExpress where you can pick your own colors. Um, I really love how shiny and pretty it is, but I keep looking at the camera, guys. I mean, mm, my brain is still a little fogged, um, and I have fever brain, 
So I'm, I'm thankfully not sick anymore still, but um, yeah, the words are going to be hard today. The I've been using, I think it's called the lasso method to anchor the thread in the back. But this stuff is so slick and I can't actually see it now. I'll have to find it at some point. But one of the stitches came loose, so I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to re-anchor that and figure out a better starting method for that. <laughs> um, all right, next I worked on Once Upon a Fairy Tale. I have a really pathetic start on this because um, I did this for my New Year New Start. Um, and I've only worked on it like four days. Um, I'm sorry, I got to get a drink of water already. <clears throat> Sharon from Sharon's Crafty Creations um, started it with me. There was a, a few other ladies that are doing it. Um, we're doing the Once Upon a Fairy Tale um, Sal 2022. Um, I'll, if, if if you're on Instagram and care to care to join me or or look at our you know watch our progress, um, we're doing this Once Upon a Fairy Tale by Heaven and Earth Designs. I'm doing the super size max color version. And boy, I was really not ready for that confetti. I, I'm, I don't mind it, but it was a lot. It, it started off like hard and fast. Um, a lot of the projects um, I start in the top left. This one I started in the lower right just for something different. And it was like confetti right off the bat. Um, so I've been doing the parking method. And for whatever reason, the park threads on some of these pieces that I've been doing have been driving me bonkers. And I'll talk about that as I, as I get to projects. Um, I've also discovered that, I can't remember, what bag did I pull this out of? I think this one I'm just using the organizer, the floss cards. And I'm just like flipping through. It works. Um, but yeah, I, I did 665 stitches over two days and I'm, I'm an, a whopping, oh, and no I forgot. I keep forgetting. Uh, I wrote these down. I'm going to tell you, uh, 21.06% through that one already. I, that's going to be part of my finish of February, I think. Um, cause I think I can get that one done in like a week if I really concentrate on it. Um, but yeah, I this is 0.2% now on this. And it's, it's such a tiny little start. And this is on 28 count Ada that I got from AliExpress. It's very, very stiff. I don't mind it, but I know that would just make a lot of people bonkers. And the shadows are kind of crazy today. I think because I forgot to turn on back another light oh hang on all right sorry about that guys i have a we have a secondary heater down here in the basement and it kicked on i thought i'd turned it down low enough but obviously it's kind of gotten chilly in the basement so i had to turn that turn that down and i went ahead and turned the light on so um yeah what i was saying that's a little better i think um but can't really quite see anything yet. I mean, it's definitely going to have a detailed picture coming out. Um, and I think I may change up how I am working this. I don't know. I'm, I'm definitely <clears throat> enjoying it. It's just um, slow. And I want fast progress at the moment. <clears throat> So, um, all right, next I worked on Melaganos. I don't have a paper for that one. So let me show you on my pattern keeper. I am trying to avoid inserting as much as possible just because it takes so, it takes so long. This is Heaven and Earth Designs. It was a limited edition chart. 
uh, by Pio Wanachiwong. Love these colors. There's a whole lot of purple for this guy, though. And I worked on him for a couple of days. It, it was definitely, um, I had a, a theme of two days was about all I got out of any one project before I was like, next, moving on. Um, so I worked on him for, um, two days and got, oh, and Once Upon a Fairy Tale, oh boy, we're, we're rabbits today. Jump, boink, 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 boink. My brain is all over the place, guys. Sorry. Um, Once Upon a Fairy Tale, I'm working two over one ten stitch. Uh, Malaganos, I am working... Also, 10 stitch, but this is on 25 count, so I'm doing it three strand because I, I like a lot of coverage. Um, I don't like, on my full coverage pieces, I don't like to see fabric show through, so um, it's not as bulky as the um, 2 over 1 full cross that I was doing. So, but it is still, it is still pretty bulky in the back, but it doesn't really bother me as far as that goes. Uh, I put in 2,304 stitches. Um, I am at 5.64% on him, and this is the one that I have. This is the the corner that I'm currently working on, and if you saw my last update, um, I think I showed both sides. I've got them rolled up at the moment, but I do have the, you can kind of see it poking through a little bit there. I do have work in the other corner as well. So, yeah, I was uh, zooming along on this one, too. So I think the dragon is going to be, like, the shadow dragon may come into play before the big, the big guy. But it's going to be a while. I've got, there's a lot of background on this one. All right. All right, next I worked on Gypsy Firefly. This is by Amy Stewart, also charted by Heaven and Earth Design. This is the regular size max color version. I'm a glutton for punishment. I love the max color stuff. And again, two days on that one. <clears throat> I only did, excuse me, I only got 600-ish. I didn't, I forgot to count look the first night so it was like 200 ish and then I got almost 400 on the second night uh let's see what's my <clears throat> here is my progress so far on that and I got a lot of this um spots filled in and I'm starting to convert to parking on this um just because I'm finding, at least on this particular one, that um, going back in and filling in these ninja stitches, it, for whatever reason, it just really uh, demotivates me to get any kind of progress done. Because it doesn't seem like I can see any progress when I'm filling in the holes like that. And I know as I get out of, out of these trees... Um, the confetti will start picking up a lot more um, since it is a max color. <clears throat> and I am at 3.26% on that chart. And that's, um, this is on 18 count Ada. And pretty much all of my Ada comes from China. I just order it off AliExpress because it's so much cheaper and I can get it basically off the bolt. Um, it's the full... 52 inches wide, I think. Um, and then they send it to me, I think, in four yard cuts is the max they'll do. Four or five, I can't remember. Um, but that's on 18 count, and it's uh, two over one, full cross for that one. And then next I worked on Bright and Starlight, also having an Earth Designs. I love their charts. So that is a common theme you will see of mine. This is by Shira Gerhardt. This is just a regular color. I don't think this one comes in a max color <clears throat> max color version. Some charts I feel like the, the max color really lends um, 
to the detail of it, but I have been trying to look at mock-ups and things before I buy a chart to see if it really needs the, the max color to get the detail that I want for the size. <clears throat> and this one was fine. So, and I apologize, I'm going to be clearing my throat a lot. Um, I'm still very phlegmy. Um, but I won't, I won't get into that because that's, that's for my update. All right. Now this one I don't have in the hoop still, so it might be a little interesting to show. This one I got, <laughs> this one I also put a lot of work in, in two days. I got 2,808 stitches in. Um, I'm at 1.79% now. And last time you saw this, you saw I had um, the park threads all in a circle around it. I had started in the middle, and I was working my way out kind of in four quadrants um, in diagonals on each of those quadrants. Well, I started working on this, and for whatever reason, the park threads, like, I couldn't. I couldn't with the park threads. I don't know if it was just because it was in the circle um, that it was doing it, but... I don't, I don't know. So I started working in my park threads and just finishing it off cross country style. And it was making me really happy to do that. So I went with it. But that, uh, the blue is part of Starlight's hair, that four lock. And I got just about all of her fingers done. And then coming in is the strap to her um, to her dress. So yeah. And I thought I was completely missing two of the colors. And I think that's what triggered it. Um, when I'm parking, I'm, I want to do that whole square of 10 by 10 to get that filled in look to it. And I thought I was missing like two of the two colors of her skin or one color of her, I don't know, but it was really irritating me that I couldn't fill in the blocks. So I think that's why it was like, you know, whatever, I'll just do some cross country stuff with that. Turns out I just hid those colors from myself in another project. So I found it and I'm gonna go back at some point. <clears throat> Might not be for a while, but I'm planning on going back and filling in the little spots that I was missing. Next. All right, we only got two more, guys. Next, I worked on Castlefest Wendelin Aotenshi. <coughs> Excuse me. By Babette, Babette, la, 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 Babette Vandenberg. This is a chart that my husband got me for Christmas, and she is a res regular size, regular color. And I did, <clears throat> again, I only did actually one day on her, but I got <laughs> 2,000, oh, and um, Bright and Starlight, it is also on 28 count Ada, two over one tenth stitch. Yes. Um... This is also two over one tenth stitch, tenth stitch on 28 count Ada. And yeah, I, I did 2,500, 2,057 stitches. Um, I have a total of 5,855 stitches done. And I actually had to move the hoop a little bit. So you're not going to see the corner that I have um, done anymore. Because I'm, I, I, I'm going to be avoiding taking stuff out of hoops until I actually really start chopping stuff off before I show you guys. <clears throat> but I have 1.59% 1. 1, 1. done now. And again, this one, for some reason, I'm, I'm not missing colors, but the park threads were driving me bonkers. So I started working, I'm still working in columns, but I'm... I worked in the, I just worked in the park threads. And then what I did was I, I, I worked on the park threads and then I finished working the square of 10 by 10 and then just worked up 
with that thread until it ran out. So I ended up doing two full squares here for my first column. Um, so simply because they were, you know, all the colors were in both squares. Um, and then some of the threads worked farther up than, than others. Um, this one, again, I just worked them in and ended up just having a tiny little bit here to, to extra. Um, this one, I didn't have any thre threads extra going up. I just ended up working them all in and, and finishing off the, uh, the two squares and then like, I don't know, two or three rows here. Um, and then just kept going up, up the column. And I, I really enjoyed, cause I'm still working in a diagonal, the 10 by 10. You can barely see those colors. There we go. That's a little better. But there's her, her dress coming into focus right here. Um, so I think this one, and I, I'm so ADD when it comes to how I want to work on a project. Some, some I'm fine with stopping at that 10 by 10 and not working in all the threads. Um, this one, like I said, it was just, I don't know. I don't know if it's because of the color scheme and how the colors just do keep going on up, but it's not quite... Okay, so for example, Bright and Starlight has very definitive... Oh, it's upside down. Very definitive stripes of cross-country. Like, it's a very def definite section of here's where the colors go, and then your thread will, will stop. Um... This one is basically the same colors over and over, just in different proportions. So for me to try to do a true co cross country, that was, it's too much decision making and for my little brain when it comes to, I have to be really precise <clears throat> for, for my, my day job with our business. I have to follow a very predetermined set of, this is how we do it. This is how it goes together. This is how it's made. And that's, that's it. Um, I think with this, I want to be able to do whatever I want as far as what stitch how it makes me happy. And some projects, it makes me happy to do cross country. Some projects, it makes me happy to park. And some projects, I, I just go with what feels right. So don't ever feel like you have to pigeonhole yourself into this is how I have to work on all of my projects. Because that's, that's not really a thing. I mean, if it's your thing, that's perfectly fine. But yeah, whatever, whatever floats my boat at the time is what I'm going to be doing. So uh, if you like variety, <laughs> stick around because I, I, you're never, you're, you're never going to know what you get with me. It's, it's going to change every week. <laughs> um, I have a stink bug. All right, bud, come on, get off the paper. So I'm not bothered by stink bugs hanging out in my house and I'm, I'm silly like that. And I, I named them. They're all bud. All of our stink bugs. We call them bud, Bud, what are you doing? Get out of the light. Stop kamikaze. -ing. Anyway, he was on the paper. Last one that I worked on is beloved. Now this is the flipped version by Adele Sessler. Also by heaven and earth, heaven and earth designs. And I, this one, this one reminds me of my husband and I, not that we're elves, but we could be in another dimension. <coughs> Excuse me. So I worked on this one the last couple of days and I'm actually going to spend today working on it too. If I do have some more stitchy time tonight because I found his hair, I actually hit these little strands <laughs> coming off of his head and I was determined to find them the other night so I put in <coughs> excuse me 700 stitches in the last couple of days and um this is done on 28 count even weave it's like an oatmeal color I am using this is done one over one full cross and the first one I hit was right here. There's 
three stitches of a darker color. And then you can see it's starting to really, you can kind of see it here a little bit more. And then obviously I'm still working, so. And I'm not sure, I don't even remember how many I've done tonight so far. And you can really, on the camera, you can really see where the different shades, I think it was 417 um, that I'm using. You can see it's darkened up a little bit over here because I think it's all the same shade. You can't see this. Like it, it, you can't tell in, in real life. I mean, if you really look at it, you can see it. I'm not going to stress about it. It's using up thread. And yeah, I'm just, I'm just not, I'm just not going to stress about it. It is what it is. Um, okay. So that is, that's it. That's, that's my stitching 30 minutes in. Um, I tried to go fast I'm telling you guys, I, I don't think I, I don't think I could make it less than an hour video as far as updates if tried. And, and trust me, I tried last time and it's still blah, 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 blah for an hour. Um, I'm going to pause, blow my nose and be right back. Okay. So now that I'm Rudolph, all right. So <clears throat> I don't necessarily have haul to show you. But I have haul to talk about because I'm pretty excited. Um, I did put in a thread order to my AliExpress store, um, the Grand Amo thread store. Um, they have always been super fast, like a few hours after I order, that I've got a shipping notification for it. Um, but I was getting really low and I was out of a couple of colors. So I went ahead and, excuse me, put in a hundred skein. Yeah. hundred skeins for 20 bucks. So that should be here hopefully within a month. Sometimes it's two weeks. I actually haven't, um, my organizers should be here tomorrow and those took a month. So I, it, it depends. Um, but I got in the mail Nothing super exciting in and of itself, but these are samples of vinyl. Um, I got a 10 gauge and a 16 gauge, and I think for project bags, the 10 gauge is going to be just fine. And um, the craft, um, craft vinyl from like Joann's um, that I found was 16 gauge and really expensive. So I've been looking at, I was looking at like a marine, like a boat marine store that does the, the windows basically. Um, and that's where I got these samples. But <clears throat> they wanted to ship it rolled on a tube through FedEx. And it was like, it was going to be eight bucks or something for a couple of yards of vinyl and 30 to ship it. And I was like, mm -mm, nope. So I found another website, Fabric Wholesale Direct, I think. I'll link them below um, if you want to check it out. Um, I don't know yet how it's going to be because I haven't gotten it yet, so I can't vouch for their quality or whatever yet. Um, but they were like super reasonable, like eight bucks to ship um, four yards. I went ahead and, and just got four yards. Um, I, I know it's a lot of vinyl, but I have a lot of fabric. Um, I had bought a bunch of, uh, quilting cotton back, I don't know, it's probably been 11 or 12 years <clears throat> that I bought all this cotton for making quilts. And y'all, I don't, I didn't make notes. I didn't print out patterns. I bought yardage of different, you know, cloths, fabrics that go together. I have no idea what project they were for. So I'm going to venture into the world of project bags, making them. Like I sew stuff for a living, so I should be able to make a bag. Um, I had watched Elizabeth Can Sew Something, I believe is her channel name. Um, I watched her 
bag making tutorial. I watched a couple of other ones as well, but I really like how she put hers together. Um, it's, it's a no fuss kind of, um, sew method, which I really like. There's no binding around the edges. It's just a fold over and sew and go. Uh, I'm all about that. So <clears throat> I'm going to try her method to make bags. I bought, um, I did order, so I've got the vinyl coming. I've got, uh, I ordered zipper coil. So just the, z the zipper tape. I didn't get specific lengths because I'm not sure how big I want to make the bags yet. I may, might want to make a couple of different sizes. Um, and we already build zippers for our, um, for our business. So I'm, I'm fine with just building a zipper. Um, so I got the sliders. I don't remember. I think I bought like 10 yards of zipper and because I, when I, I'm going to jump right in both feet. I can make a bag. This is going to be a different method of making a bag, but I can make a bag. Um, my only thing that I'm like eh, about is I read some articles about um, the interfacing, the fusible interfacing, and Pellon was the um, the brand most recommended for the for the U.S. buyers. And <clears throat> I, the cheapest I found was like sixty bucks for. 20 inch cut of 10 yards or something or 40 that was like 40 bucks I don't know it was expensive and I didn't necessarily want to put out that much money for interfacing I'm, I'm sure it's great um it was the shape flex that I was looking at <clears throat> but I don't necessarily mind if it's fusible or not I'm going my plan is to to quilt it down so that it doesn't shift and I don't really feel that fusing it would necessarily make it, I mean, I'm sure it'll make it, makes it easier, but I'm not intimidated by pinning it to baste it and, and sewing it down. So what I did was I got on Aliexpress, <clears throat> of course, and found a store that had a bunch of different weights to choose from, from very, very lightweight, like you can really see a hand through it, to very heavyweight. And just pick something kind of in the middle. I tried to find an equivalent because they they go by like grams per yard. I'm assuming of how much it weighs, um, and I couldn't find an equivalent that that Pellon would have. So I just guessed. So it it's not. I, I'm not planning on selling these. I plan on making a crap ton. Yes, but I think what I'm going to do is if they turn out well, and it's something that I'm comfortable with giving to someone else, I will probably use them for, for giveaways. Because why not? Um, so that's that. I think that was all that I'm expected to get. Because I'm on a, I'm on a, it's a, um, no chart year, no more buying stuff. Uh, oh, I did get... Sorry, crinkling, crinkle alert. These gift tags, I got these off of Amazon. Now these were on sale for like super cheap, um, but it, they're just the craft paper gift tags. You can see that. These actually have, oops, oh, oh, man down, bye. I think there's a moment. They actually have these pre-cut heart things, but I bought, buy a whole punch and just I made thread drops and I found that it's got a little pre-cut hole here too and a binder ring fits through it just fine so I ended up zipper keeps popping off this bag makes it kind of hard to open the bag. But I kitted up Gypsy Firefly Okay, I didn't kit it fully up. Um, as I these are the colors that I've been using so far. Oh my gosh, I love this. Like, I thought I loved the floss cards, which those are fine too. 
and I have 50 coming. Yeah, like not 50 holes, 50 cards. Because I can't do anything small or in moderation. <laughs> um, but this is just, I have them in number order. I just sharpied it. And <clears throat> it's so easy to just flip through, find the number that I need, open it up to the number, pull a thread off, and voila. Love it. I'm not sure how long it will be before the cardboard runs out, or not runs out, wears out. So longevity is probably an issue in the future. Um, they're not super expensive for a hundred um, gift tags, but when when you look at the grand scheme of things, when you're working on kits that are not kits, but projects that have 236 colors, because I like max color projects, that can get kind of expensive. You know, when you're looking at maybe eight four to eight dollars a pop depending on I mean it's Amazon prices fluctuate um, I think if they were not on sale it was five or six bucks for a pack of a hundred and it wasn't much cheaper on AliExpress I, I looked there too um, <clears throat> so while I really like them what I'd love to do is <coughs> excuse me uh, I know I could probably do like cereal box cardboard would work. I know Darren um, makes his own like that, but he mentioned something that would drive me personally crazy is if I don't, if I didn't have an actual like template to, to uh, like a big punch to punch them out or something like that, having mismatched sizes on those and kind of the rough edges of cut cardboard, that would make me a little crazy. I like how the gift tags have smooth edges um, that aren't going to, stab me because yes I would stab myself with a corner of a cereal box cut <laughs> thread drop um, but I really like those so we'll see um, I still have a little over 300 that I can use um, so I may end up and I, I want to use those for <clears throat> excuse me for putting a, an open skein, like a skein that has been used, partially used or whatever, I want to use those for putting them back into the, um, into the master set that I have for, um, wow, that was weird. Just my brain was like, mm, nope, we're done with words. Shut down. Um, basically when I kit down, I want to be able to use the floss drop to put it in the floss away bags that I have my master set stored in. <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> One second. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, so, oh, the last thing I got. Alright, this year is supposed to be a no new charts year. I have one exception. I kind of. I didn't completely buy a chart. But I did put a request in for a super size max color of a chart with heaven and earth designs because they don't have it. I tried using um, like a pick to pat software to um, to chart it. It doesn't go big enough, and it doesn't go with as many colors as I want. I was just not quite happy with the detail that was coming up with it. Um, I actually asked Kaylee to chart. I, I've been looking at different pictures and I asked Kaylee if she wouldn't mind just taking a look um, with hers, but hers doesn't go quite as high as I wanted to either. The chart that she, that she made was beautiful, but I think the image is not, I ended up, I ended up changing my mind on the image. And since Heaven and Earth Designs already has that image, I was like, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and do it. It's like $20 to request a size and max color. So, you're welcome for anybody in the future who gets that chart. 
Because once, once it's been charted, they just put it up on the site and anybody can get it. But the first person who requests it has to pay for it, which kind of sucks, but it's fine. It is what it is. <clears throat> and this is what I'm going to get. Or at least that's what's being requested. Yeah. I know. It's going to be... I will be buying a cone or two, who knows, of black. Because that that's the Veil Nebula. And... My husband and I both love this image. Um, he's actually used it for um, a, a quilt um, a quilt design that we did. And it's the colors in it. It's, it's just something. I, I love space images, um, especially from the Hubble telescope. I'm really excited for the... Um, the new telescope that just got launched. I can't remember the name of name of names and then words <laughs> are what in the world anywho <clears throat> I'm sure you know what I'm talking about that one that, that got launched I'm excited to see what kind of pictures they come up with with that um so anyway so yeah that now I don't have to buy it once it's charted it's up there it'll be there I, there's no rush there's no rush. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm still going to try and be good. I'm still going to try and do no new charts. But I'm not going to promise that my will will not be broken when it comes to a sale in that chart. It may happen this year. So we'll see. Um, plans. Uh, I obviously my I'm very random when it comes to what I've been what I want to work on it's whatever I feel like um, is what gets pulled and worked on for the, for the couple of days <clears throat> um, I think I've been working on a crap ton of full coverages because February is gonna be finished at February that is that's my goal um, and most of those finishes are not going to be um, like summer stroll is a full coverage piece, but it's all back stitching to get done. So it's not like I'm actually going to be cross stitching. Um, so she's going to be my top priority. She will be done in February. Um, depending on how absolutely sick of back stitching I am at that point. Um, my next goal will be, um, the sorceress. Can't remember the actual name of that chart at the moment, but the sorceress will also get finished um, as far as the backstitching goes. I will not be FFOing those two yet. Um, I kind of want to. I can't. I, I'm not willing to pay for um, a framer to do them, but I've also never framed before, so that's going to be uh, a learning process, and I'm not sure I want to do a learning process on those two pieces. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then. I'm hoping that will take me maybe a week to get those two done. Um, so the first week of February, probably those two. Um, Nomi's, I think, again, I only have maybe seven days worth of work left on that. If that... Yeah, seven. Seven days. If I, like, really push for a finish on that. So second week of February, I think Nomi's is going to get done. And then... Be a light. Uh, my dimensions kit. And I'm I'm almost positive I can get that done. It's, it's a little guy. It should not take me that long. <laughs> I'm gonna sneeze. Hang on. And we're back. I do not have cute sneezes. I have very loud, obnoxious, loud sneezes. So I I won't I wasn't gonna subject you guys to that. Um <clears throat> The last half of February, I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure what Be A Light will be. Hair. Um, be A Light, I would assume, would be not quite a week. Maybe four days-ish. Um, <clears throat> and then, I'm not sure. I'm not sure after that. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Maybe, maybe my vault piece, the roses with the butterfly. Um, I don't know that I would be able to get it finished, but maybe really close. So we'll see. We will see for that. Other than that, um, 
yeah, just finished out January with whatever. Um, it seems to be about two weeks is a comfort um, filming time for me. Um, it really kind of depends on my schedule and the kids and, <clears throat> and all that. If you've been with me for a while, you know, it's actually relatively early. I think it's just after midnight. Um, I've been a day walker for ish for a couple of weeks now. Um, sort of, uh, I couldn't sleep until really late yesterday, <clears throat> the day before that. I actually had kind of a true insomnia where I couldn't sleep, and then I woke up after like four hours. That was a rough day. And then I went to bed really early, and then slept a really long time, and then couldn't sleep, and eh, whatever. Um, so no promises on filming schedule, schedule but I, I never have had one, so we'll see. We'll see you when I see you. <laughs> um, so that's it for stitchiness, 45 minutes later. That's about par for me, I think. Um... So if, if that's all you're here for, thank you so much for stopping by. Um, if this is your first time here, um, please feel free to subscribe. If you haven't, I would love to have you. Um, I know I'm kind of random and scatterbrained, but that's me. <clears throat> so life updates. <laughs> do you remember this scene in my last video? Don't do it. Uh, yeah. The next morning I woke up with my eyes glued shut, my eyeballs were red and itching, and I had pink eye. I'm not saying it was because I touched my eye, I'm saying my eye was starting to itch and I didn't even realize it. So that was fun. Went to the doctor, got the eye drops, and apparently I'm allergic to the stuff they usually use that's like, you know, twice a day you put some drops in and it's no big deal. Oh no, I had to have the stuff that you got to put drops in every two hours. So I just had a timer going on my phone and every two hours I'm putting drops in and they burned and drama, drama, drama. Um, there was actually a couple of days where I had to have ice packs on my eyes because they hurt so bad. Um, I was having trouble stitching because they hurt. It hurt to look at stuff. Um, I didn't get a lot of work done work-wise, <clears throat> excuse me, um, so that was, that was a rough week, <laughs> and then, so I'm finally starting to feel better, I'm on my last thing of eye drops, and I had, like, a day where I'm like, okay, I think it's really starting to go away, this was about a week later, so last week, the next day, I started feeling here. That just kind <clears> of <throat> that you get, man, I'm coming down with something. Sure enough, I woke up the next morning, waking up, I use loosely. I woke up enough to realize I had a fever and that I felt like crap and I started coughing and then I slept for the next 48 hours, basically. Um, I woke up enough long enough to text my husband to get me water because I was, I knew I was getting really dehydrated because I, um, I have a hard time staying hydrated anyway because the smell of water from losing my sense of smell last in 2020, <clears throat> um, water actually, um, smells really, really bad. So, um, that's why I've gotten this now because I can't smell it when I suck it up through a straw. Um, so I had him get that together for me and I basically just slept. I would get up to be and go back to bed. Um, I think I got up to eat once in that 48 hours and then I went right back to bed. I thought I was going to be able to get up and it wasn't a very high grade fever, just enough to make you sleepy and to feel like poop. Um, the coughing was the, what got me kind of concerned. So Friday, my fever broke on Thursday and unfortunately I couldn't get in to get um, a COVID test until Friday. And I just did one of the drive through things. Um, <clears throat> and I actually felt some kind of way when it came back positive. Um, I was really grateful that it was only like two days worth of fever. 
um, and that it really, it was a very deep chesty cough with a lot of, um, a lot of phlegm and, you know, that, that wet cough grossness. Um, but I had had both vaccines and the booster and I felt so grateful that that's all it was. I'm pretty sure it would have been a lot worse had I not had those. Um, I actually talked in my last video cause I've been sick for forever now. Um, <clears throat> I just had a cold in December with a cough and I talked about how it seems like whatever respiratory illness is out there, I catch it and it kicks my butt for at least a week and I've bronchitis and I've had pneumonia and yeah. So I'm obviously I'm still, <clears throat> I'm still uh, from it. Um, lingering effects, if you will. Um, but yeah, basically slept for two days and then I was recovering. Not everybody has been that lucky. So, um, and I'm actually, my son, the little one had had a fever for th three and a half days right before my, mine. We didn't really think anything of it because it was just a really low grade fever. And that was it. That was all his symptoms. Um, he was cuddly, you know, he was, he was fever kid. You know, he wanted, wanted to sit with us on a, in a chair and watch TV. He just wanted to cuddle. Um, he had a couple of, like a couple times he coughed and it wasn't even like that big of a deal. It was like a dust cough or something. <clears throat> um, and our two, my, my husband's older boys were actually, um, their mom's grandmother passed. So their great grandma passed and they had actually gone to Oklahoma for the funeral, unfortunately. Um, and both, um, one of the twins and his mom were sick. So hopefully they did all their contact tracing and all that because they were running a fever and coughing by the time they got back. So everybody got sick at the exact same time. <clears throat> um, and actually, um, the, and they were scheduled for their boosters that weekend. Um, so one twin, no symptoms, no fever, no nothing. So we're assuming he was just asymptomatic. Um, and the other one, he's still, he's still coughing really bad. He's not feverish anymore. He's been fever free for at least three days now, but his cough is much, much worse. So we're, we're monitoring that. Um, so, and it, it was bound to happen eventually. I mean, that's, that's kind of the name of the game with this stuff. It's eventually everybody's going to get it like the flu problem is is that it's not it can be more than just a flu and that's where the concern is so anyways enough about that I'm okay now I by the time I realized what it was I was okay so I didn't advertise it much <laughs> Um, I had a few people message to ask if I was okay. I um, so appreciate that. Because um, it had been a little bit longer than kind of the normal intervals that I do uh, videos. But um, obviously I'm still a little bit chesty. So I didn't, I didn't want to push it with a video. Um, plus being kind of a day walker for, for the last week. So there's that. Um, next week is actually going to be really busy for us because <clears throat> we, um, our business hosts a hammock hang here on our property, uh, a few times a year. And this is our annual winter hang. And it is going to be, I think high thirties, low teens is the forecast that I last heard. So it's going to be a good one. Um, people are going to bring out their winter quilts and, um, we provide, you know, we're going to make chili and I don't know, my husband has a whole menu going. Um, he completely overworks himself for these events and, um, has already started prepping and stuff for it. But, uh, uh, I've got a girlfriend flying up on 
Wednesday, so I gotta go pick her up from the airport. Um, <clears throat> now this is an outdoor event, so you know everybody's nice and spaced. Um, we've had uh, when Ohio has been open and allowing for gatherings outdoors for that. Um, you know, we went ahead and held our events. Um, when it comes to like the mess area, we ask that people put their masks on and, and things like that. So, um, we can't hide from it forever. We can only do our due diligence when it comes to stuff. So that's coming up. Um, <clears throat> I actually see that. Yeah. That is a jury summons. Scheduled for right in the middle of our, well, not even the middle of it. If I have to go in, it's going to be like the week of. So I'm really hoping, I don't mind jury duty. Um, I don't mind doing our, our my civic duty when I need to. I'm staring at it like it'll go away. Um, <clears throat> but it's a really inconveniently timed one. So I call, I had a call on Friday and cross my fingers that they settle or, you know, do a plea thing or, or whatever. <clears throat> now it's just for the pettit jury, so it's nothing, you know, it's not like I have to take a month of time off or whatever. I'm hoping actually that they will give me the excuse um, when I go in that I'm a business owner and I still need to work. Um, I usually come in and, and I, I usually work while we're having these events because I do have to stay at the house with the little guy. Um, my mother-in-law will um, come down for one of the nights so that I can be out. Um, <clears throat> mingling overnight for, for one night. Um, but with those kinds of temps, we don't have like snow clothes for him properly yet. So, um, I'll be, I'll be at the house with the little guy, except for, for when she's here watching him. So I'll still be working. Um, I just got done prepping a huge batch of hammocks and tarps and accessories that I'm going to be starting on. <clears throat> what with being sick for the past couple of weeks into last December, I've been kind of behind with, with my work with that. Um, I, yes, I've gotten a lot of stitching done, but even though I'm sitting at a sewing machine, it's a lot more physical than just sitting and stitching. So I would wear down pretty quickly. I worked every day, except when I had my fever, but I didn't get as much as I would have liked to do. Um, so that's, that's definitely going to be, so when my stuff for my project bags comes in, it's probably going to eat a little bit into stitchy time. Um, but I'm actually really looking forward to, uh, to learning how to make those. So we shall see. I'm actually planning on hopefully doing, um, if I can get away a little bit, doing kind of a walkabout on part of our property and taking some video to show you guys kind of my, um, uh, area that we live in that allows us to, to be able to have, uh, events like that. So it give you a little, little glimpse into my, my, my real life. <clears throat> so, all right. Well, I think, I think that's it. I think that's enough. <laughs> um, I, my voice is, this is the most I've talked for, um, since I got sick. So if you can hear my voice is starting to go, so I'm going to let you guys go. Um, I don't really have any shout outs at the moment. Um, I've been, I, I've been kind of comfort watching, um, floss tubers and, and videos and stuff, um, that, uh, um, just because that's what was comfortable to me. <clears throat> I'm, I caught up on Jemima's videos, finally, the rocking stitcher. And I can't remember if I was caught up with her, my last video or not. I am about 15 videos away from being caught up with Darren's um, videos, and um, I watch Stitching Dreamers, like Stitch With Me's, her, her floss tubes are more like Stitch With Me's. Um, she did a wet parade uh, recently, that was fun to watch, I had forgotten some of the, the uh, projects that she had, and then um, Julala, Julalak, I'm sure I'm butchering her name, um, I've been watching her videos, so... Um, all right, I'm going to get everything put away. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you have stuck around for my normal hour, <laughs> hour with Alara. Um, but, uh, if you haven't already and, and you enjoy, please go ahead and give that thumbs up. 
Um, you know, subscribe if you haven't, if you like. Uh, if you don't, don't. That's fine. Um, but I, I really appreciate. Uh, I really, bleh. yeah. I'm worn out now. <laughs> so, anyways, guys, I will catch you in my next video. Happy stitching. Um, don't forget to enjoy your journey. It is not just about the destination. Take care, guys. Bye. Thank you.